<laughs> so, I mean, essentially what I wanted to cover from a demo perspective today, let me just pause this and just speak a little bit. Uh, see, most of you are familiar with our VMware product and we have been shipping this for quite some time. Let me pause this. Uh, what I wanted to take this time is to show you the KVM uh, product, both an installation and the user interface. See, we have had a lot of customers, especially, I mean, there are two or three segments that you can break up, right? There are all these uh, small to medium enterprise customers who love KVM. They want to install KVM, uh, and they want, but management is still not that easy on a KVM environment. They're not there yet to go to OpenStack. They're like, ah, oh, it's, it's much more involved. I don't have the resources. Can your product work on KVM? Can your product just support KVM? We have had a lot of uh, requests for that. So we took this opportunity and said, hey, let's just develop a KVM product. It's, uh, it's nothing to do with OpenStack, but it's just the KVM. So, and of course, there are other larger customers who are like, yeah, OpenStack is the way to go. I need OpenStack support, right? So we took the time to say, let's integrate uh, to OpenStack, both from a Nova perspective, from a Cinder perspective, develop the drivers, and then they get complete seamless integration into OpenStack. So there are both set of customers that we are targeting, just KVM and OpenStack. Of course, the hypervisor running on OpenStack will be KVM. So for from an installation of KVM point of view, I recorded it. I'm not going to do a fresh install here. Uh, it takes like five, 10 minutes to, or uh, 20, 15 minutes to install. So I'm going to do a recorded uh, demo of the install. And once it is done, we'll show the live of the operations of the KVM product. So I'm going to just start it. From, an, from a, a demo point of view, the key, oh, let me pause this a minute. That the key requirement for us for the installation is the hosts that are going to install the KVM or Maxta version, well, KVM version of Maxta, have to have network connectivity to the external world. That's because we are going to download a few packages and install on the on the hypervisor itself. So we need network connectivity, and this just shows that hey, I'm going to go ping outside and say hey, I have network connectivity to the to the box. And once that is done, uh, the customer would download a package. Oh, before that, there's one other requirement that they have to uh, enable, which is just to make sure that uh, within the network interface that we have, that we disable the NM control portion of it, the network management control portion of it. Mm -hmm. And the other, one other requirement that you have is to make sure that we disable the SE Linux. Uh, and it's, uh, it has to be disabled. These are the only three requirements that we have. And once that is done, as part of the installation package, uh, you get a configuration file, right? So users downloads the uh, gzip file or the tar gzip file, and uh, that, that, there that is it. And then you would extract it, and as part of it, we give you a configuration file. As the configuration file essentially looks like this. So here you would extract the file, and once it's extracted, uh, you you will see uh, if you go into the source directory, you will see a configuration file. Let me pause this. Oh, So I'm just opening the configuration file. Okay, so in the configuration file, there are few parameters that I have to set, not, not a whole lot. Uh, the only thing that you would have to set is what interface to use, and also what are the IP addresses that I should be using for the KVM cluster. Just uh, three parameters, and for every host, you will have an entry. If you have eight hosts, you'll have eight hosts. You update the configuration information. And once that is done, um, you would, I mean, here, as you see, the host is one configuration that you would change. Of course, assuming the passwords and so are, th uh, are the same, you would say, hey, which interface that we should be using for the storage network and for the hypervisor itself. And network connectivity. We need network connectivity. You would set the network connectivity say, and pretty much save the file. Uh, Uh, you would you'd save this configuration file and just run a simple command. Okay. Once the configuration file is saved, uh, you would just run a simple command which says, hey, install, and here is the configuration file to use. I mean, we provide you the different options that you can use, but essentially all you would do is, hey, here is the configuration file, uh, install script, and here is the configuration file. Okay. 
probably I talked a little faster here than I recorded. So uh, you would use the configuration file, and then that's it. It'll go and install the KVM product. So pretty simple. Uh, just give it the configuration file, and you're done. Uh, with that, let's assume that the configuration is installed. Let me close this off in the interest of time. Let me go to a system that is running the KVM hypervisor. You going live on us now? Huh? Are you going with a live demo on us yeah. now? Yeah, now it's a live demo. Um, reload. Yep, there you go. Uh, it's a live demo. It shows you the hosts that are part of the cluster. Right? So it will show you all the different hosts that are part of the cluster. And the key here is to provide the same level of storage services that we have in a traditional VMware environment. Things like Maxta snapshots, Maxta clones, uh, live migration that I can live migrate similar to like a vMotion that I can move my VMs over to a different host and so on, right? And uh, so to do that, so for example, if you were to create a new VM, all you would have to do is go on a host, say, hey, I want to create a new instance. And you will click on the new instance, give this, give an instance a name, and the thing is you'll have to select an image. Okay. What, what OS I'm going to install on this particular VM. And once you give it the image, you we co-create a VM and you're done. Right? So let me go back and use one of the VMs that we have created. Right? So here I have a virtual machine. You, you can execute some of the standard operations. Right? I can go take a snapshot of a virtual machine. Say here is a virtual machine, let me give it a name. SFD, SFD7, and then I can say test, go create it. It would go create a Maxta snapshot. And uh, now in this case, the hosts that you're seeing are Maxta storage nodes. Yes. Uh, but there also happen to be running Maxta the hypervisor. Compute nodes, hypervisor yes. compute they are running nodes. the hypervisor as well as the Maxta nodes. And here is the snapshot that we took. So now, from the snapshot that we took, of course, you can delete the snapshot, or you can clone this particular snapshot. Right? So as we talked about, snapshot is a read-only copy, and clone is the one that lets you read-write. So I can go give this a name, SFD clone, and then select a host where you want this VM to be powered on. Right? Hmm. Let's say I'm going to select three. Say go create it. What distribution uh, do you support with? Uh, we support CentOS as well as Red Hat. Okay. Now you Ubuntu. Um, uh, Ubuntu uh, is supported, but I mean it's test. People here use it, mm -hmm. but it's just a matter of testing and making sure that it works and so on, right? Go create it. I know it's. I saw some error pop up. Friday the thirteenth. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, you would go ahead and say, okay, here is the clone that we created. Now, what do I do with this clone? I can go come here. I can power on this particular clone. Once you power on the clone, uh, you can go log in. Of course, the OS will be installed. You go log in. You have a complete clone of a particular virtual machine. Could you show the configuration of the storage on those uh, on the nodes? Yeah. Devices. Yeah. So if you go here, if I scroll down, this particular node has uh, HDD, which is the boot disk, and uh, you have uh, the MXSP that's that we are using. Uh, these are the disks that we are using. The reason you're using a hard drive versus a like flash drive? Uh, I mean, we do purpose? have uh, oh for the boot. For the boot, yes. Uh, I mean, you could use it. You, you could. could. Use it. It's just a configuration. It's just a configuration. Uh, standard practice is to boot from a set at home or something, mm -hmm. so yeah. that it frees up all the local drives. So that's yeah. what we recommend. That, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. That, that's exactly. And it's significantly cheaper, exactly. especially in the lab yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So we, 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 yeah, we don't need a lot of you know set at home. Just you know, like 32 gig is is good enough for the hypervisor and the max instance. Yeah, I'll take you get 256 gig SD cards now. So. <laughs> okay. So the the next action. I mean, what's uh, what would be interesting is also to do look at live migration, right? I mean, snapshots, clones are interesting, but uh, what really matters is to make sure uh, that you can live migrate, which, assen which essentially says that I also have uh, shared storage, right? Um, actually, Stephen is saying, hey, you're out of time. <laughs> okay, so let me just at least do a quick live migration. 
uh, here is the destination host that I would select and give the credentials um, and say hey I want to do a live migration of this particular VM and go migrate while this is happening let me just uh, go in to I mean I, it, it would not take much but let me just in the interest of time just wanted to show you our integration into mm -hmm. the OpenStack uh, you have of course the standard horizon and you go go to an instance I need to log in um, Oh, you passed a bunch of asterisks. Which really is single sign-in log <laughs> what is that? between OpenStack and the hmm? What you need is okay. a single sign-in So once, once, yeah. once you sign in, uh, you will have all the instances running. I can launch an instance. It, it becomes, be and RSA, here, right. the idea is we have the Nova integration as well as the Cinder integration and the Glance integration, right? So you have Nova which says, I can take a snapshot. So it means that we understand that the request is coming from the compute. I'm going to take a snapshot or I'm going to clone it on a Maxta or a Cinder driver that's supported by Maxta, and you power on. And how in sync are you guys with the OpenStack updates so, to uh, Cinder, Nova, et cetera? Yeah, so essentially from uh, a pure OpenStack point of view, uh, we right now are operating on Juno, and we are already looking at uh, promoting our driver Cinder as well as Nova drivers into the Kilo uh, branch so that mm -hmm. everybody gets it. Okay. Right, uh, but from a distribution point of view, because I mean, we don't want to support. We are not an open stack company which is supporting open stack, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to, from a support point of view, we want to support a distribution yeah. with the distribution like Mirantis and Red Hat. So we have qualified Mirantis, we have qualified Red Hat, we have have a partnership with Mirantis, uh, and so on. So essentially, from a support, we want to go the route of supporting a distribution. And from a support and from a master development point of view, we are very much in sync with what's going on with uh, the latest and the greatest of open. That's what I was looking for. Thank you.